Hello everybody, Zach here, recording from Tulum in Mexico and this may be one of the last videos that I record and share from Mexico as I may be flying to the United States sometime this coming week, so exciting times afoot. I am here today with some notes that I've written up about my ayahuasca journey. And this is really what I want to talk about in this video. It's a bit more of a reflection about my ayahuasca journey now that I've had a week to integrate what happened and my experiences. So I'd like to share a little bit about that today. I also would like to just say that I haven't shared much in the past week as well. Uh, I've been really focused on my work. Uh, which has been, yeah, it's not the most exciting stuff in the world, so I've just been really cracking on with that every day, getting that done. And yeah, that's really it. I haven't really made time for sharing videos, but that's also another part of what I learned and what I gained clarity on during my ayahuasca journey was the my desire or this yearning that I have to be sharing more of myself, to be creating more videos like this, to be creating more of a structure around it so that I show up more consistently and just produce more. So I remember I set that intention for the beginning of this year that I wanted to be creating content on like a calendar doing things in more of a systematized way. And I know it's like seven months into the year now and I have started doing that more for sure, but there's always more. There's always more that can be done. So that's what I'm gonna be doing as I progress into the rest of this year. And then definitely 2022, big number coming up. I'll be doing even more. So yeah, I'm excited right now. I'm excited. I'm here again in this co-working space, enjoying this aircon and this bit of coffee, which uh, I'm taking it easy on the coffee at the moment because it's, yeah, we all know that game. gets a bit shaky, gets a bit addictive, gets a bit dangerous. <laughs> so enjoying this space. It's just lapping up, nice cool air at the moment. And yeah, feeling good. Looking forward to flying to the United States. Uh, I am going to Colorado to meet a friend and I'm gonna help her with creating her website and um, some technical stuff like that and help her out there. So I'm excited about that. And I'll be staying with, with her there for, for a while. So that's exciting. And so just enjoying my last days in Mexico, really. I haven't done a lot. I think what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take this camera on a tour on the bicycle I've got. And yeah, let's go from there. So, ayahuasca, 25th of June, 2021. Really, these were just keywords of what, I, what popped into my mind, sort of channeled in the moment. The problem was as well was <laughs> it was dark, like the ayahuasca ceremony is conducted uh, at nighttime. And so I had just a little bit of candlelight to, to write from and also with the ayahuasca because because the lines between physicality and spirit get so blurred it was really difficult for me to be able to even write things so i ended up with a lot of pages like this <laughs> where you can probably only just about make out one word here which is wow which is down here at the bottom <laughs> and yeah it's so I've been deciphering this enigma code that, <laughs> that I created for myself. And I managed to scrape together one page in total. 
So I'm just going to share these now. So this was the first evening and there was of course a lot that I didn't write down that I wish I had or just in the time, in the moment where I just I'm so wrapped up in the moment that I don't want to be I want to be feeling it fully rather than just distracting my consciousness away to write something down. I just wanted to be completely present with what I was thinking and feeling. So that's why a lot of stuff didn't get written down. So intergalactic healing, I'm just going to run through them all first and then I'll go over them and talk about them a little bit, each of them. So of course, this is just I'm not going to really give that much context initially, so that's... I just suggest don't, don't judge too much. And if anything scares you, such as anything to do with reptiles or anything like that, then just remember it's a part of yourself. So, intergalactic healing. Magic. What have you taken from this land? Housh. Housh, housh, housh. What is ego? When is it okay to take? How to stop ayahuasca puking, purging. Honoring the sacred feminine. Ancient stress. You receive. We are children. Kundalini fired. Spine straight. Sacral and root chakras. And then the following day, the second ceremony. <laughs> I know I don't know. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Flow, allow the flow. Keep it together, yes. Balance. Second density snake consciousness. Dragon. Release, awful, now. Mindful, always. Vibrant red fruit. Restriction. Royal wizard. Get used to seeing me. There is nothing quite like ayahuasca. It's true own being God but don't be a dick <laughs> becoming I don't really like that word evolving more into my telepathic nature and abilities sorry grandma <laughs> build your empire What is your secret? Transformation. Wow. Galactic lineage. So, starting from the top. Intergalactic healing. Like I said in my other ayahuasca video, so I won't go into it too much right now, but the intergalactic healing when I was there in the ceremony and there was like this Amazonian shaman and like people from all around the world from every type of like ethnicity and culture you could think of it was like we had all come together into this melting pot to be able to heal this kind of intergalactic soup of ancient conflict and differences between all the different energies that span across the uh, the galaxy and beyond so that was really beautiful in and of itself just to be able to be in that space 
hold that space for ourselves and for one another was just a whole level of healing in and of itself. It was just such a sense of unification and community and togetherness that with the ayahuasca as well, with the ayahuasca, was, what I noticed was it very much kind of <clears throat> activates your heart center, really brings your heart together and makes you very almost ultra compassionate and connected to everybody and everything around you. So yeah, that was so healing and beautiful, quite the experience. And then magic. I think that just spelled M-A-J-I-K. So like an alternative way to the traditional way of spelling magic. And I don't know, it was just, I felt uh, the magic within me, you know, as human beings, we are very magical creatures where in terms of our manifestation abilities, our creative abilities were incredibly potent in that regard. So just feeling like a bit of a magician uh, in that moment I was so that was really cool and just the energy of the entire experience and being in that place with this the chanting and the music that was being played like live vocals and guitar it was really really special yeah I look I will look forward to the time where I'm able to sit <clears throat> in such a ceremony once again and be able to go that deep um, in that way I mean, of course, we can always go deep through meditation and <clears throat> reach those same kind of depths. But there's something about doing it with ayahuasca that you can't really replicate, in my opinion, quite to the same degree. It's never really going to be the same. Of course, you can. It's always possible, but it's just different. Let's just say that, or I will just say that. And then the next one, what have you taken from this land? That really was, I think, yeah, by this point, so much of, so much of, um, <clears throat> I'd already been through so much of the experience, so much of the trip by this time of writing this, uh, that I've missed a lot of like the really deep stuff that I'd kind of seen in my mind's eye and emotionally it had come up for me as well. So, um, yeah, and that stuff I just I would not have been con cognizant enough or have the kind of motor coordination to be able to uh, really write down effectively like what I was experiencing. So, but yeah, what have I taken from this land? Again, this, like I said in the video, my previous video where I was describing my ayahuasca experience, um, what have you taken from this land? That was like me doing, taking some, like, some toilet roll um, and just kind of also just tapping into that feeling of like, I had my fancy pen out, um, my Parker pen, and just feeling like there's those in the world that are just not as, in a in so much of a, an abundant position I suppose um, and I just have compassion and empathy for those who have chosen that life path and it just makes me want to give of myself more to help those more in need and then Haush that's just a saying of the shaman there it's a traditional Amazonian word or expression used to, I suppose, tone in a way, tone with the energy, tone in the energy of the, of the moment, of the time, and haush, 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 haush. Um, and then, of course, what is ego? There's this, uh, what is ego? Yeah. Well, this ego gets very upset by this speakerphone that gets blasted in the morning for about an hour and then again at lunchtime which is basically like the local police basically saying over a megaphone on repeat on a recording um, stay away from large crowds do not form in large crowds be punishable by law I don't want to give it too much energy but COVID for the past year has just been made me very angry at times where it's just but you have to have understanding that people are just afraid 
They don't know any better. They're just being told what to do and they're just blindly following what they've been told to do. And I get that. It's just, it's just frustrating for me. But I accept it. And now I'm gonna carry on with this video. So what is ego? <laughs> I think that was really getting to this idea of like, the idea of when you're stepping into surrendering to what is and to God and to the creative source within us. Ego and God then can kind of like meld into one thing in a way. And the lines for me are just so blurry at this point between I'm really looking forward to getting out of this place, to be honest. I really would have benefited to have perhaps found a place or just a working space more out of the town so I don't get all of this noise. Um, yeah, really frustrating for me. So please bear with me. Yeah, determinism. So blurring the lines, I've been blurring my own belief system lines between free will and the divine plan like determinism versus personal creatorship and really what we're meant to experience is what we're meant to experience in life and if we are experiencing it then it's meant for us if we aren't then it's not meant for us um, but at the same time we have the free choice to be able to create what we want so it's both it is free will and it is determinism at the same time so uh, I still to this day have not completely made peace with the two concepts and that is my mind going around in circles trying to figure it out and the truth is my mind will never be able to figure it out because it's not allowed to <laughs> it's not just it's just not meant to maybe maybe it is allowed to on one level but at the same time it can defeat the purpose of this game of physical reality and incarnation. And that's why I believe I have not really found the ultimate clarity within myself. And while I know all the opposing ideas and concepts on both sides, like of free will, divine plan determinism, and I know both exist at the same time, it's still, yeah, I'm just, this is why I'm at this point of just right, surrender, do not worry about your path. Just do your best. Focus on your what brings you joy. And the synchronicity will follow. And that is my own best advice to myself in regards to this. After the past three years of trying to figure out how this dynamic of the universe, of this universe, really works. So... <laughs> <laughs> enough on that subject <laughs> I can't take it anymore um, or I have taken it enough shall I say yeah I've taken it enough I know where I'm out with it I do not need to continue going around in circles in the mind of when is it okay to take again this is coming back from the what have you taken from this land and yeah it's I think I know within myself like when is when it's okay to take and at this point when I wrote that it was like the lines were blurry between I think as well it's like in my past and even now I'm I kind of it's like ownership and possession of intellectual property shall I say I know that with my own work that I've created, like say my emotional healing course, um, that's something that I would want to share freely. But then you have other people that are selling a course for $3,000 and it's, it's just words. It's the same kind of situation. And it's all based on the value that you place upon these things, such as a written course. 
but we all have different perceptions of of how we want to give our value to the world. This is a whole conversation for a whole other time and yeah, it's I suppose what I'm saying here is like when is it okay to take when is it okay to just respect that boundary and it's a complex subject it's not it's not just going to take a few minutes so moving on how to stop ayahuasca puking so of course for those who have not studied ayahuasca and the effects that it can have <clears throat> one very common symptom of taking ayahuasca is this need to like uh, puke and to vomit <clears throat> uh, which is usually I believe I believe it's a lot to do with the body trying to reject the medicine trying to reject it in the stomach and so you try and puke it out of yourself now some people do believe that like the puking part I mean some people do puke some people don't but some people do believe that the puking part is also important for the integration of the medicine into the body. But I believe, what if there's a different way? If we look at this in terms of like biology and conscious biology, quantum biology, where we are able to, let's say I drink the medicine and what I did was on my first ceremony, I drank the medicine and to stop my body from attempting to reject it, I projected loving and peaceful intention to my stomach. And that just really allowed that medicine to absorb into my body without my body attempting to reject it, which was great. I didn't feel the need to puke at all. The second night, I was much more irritable, much more tired. I didn't really give that peaceful, loving intention to my stomach that time because I just didn't have the energy to. And that, at that point, I was a bit more like burping a lot and like had a lot more gas. And so my body didn't integrate the medicine as well as it did the first night, I felt. But still, it seemed to work well. So that's what I would suggest to anyone who doesn't, who would like to avoid the puking because I don't feel it is actually necessary at all. But that's my perspective. Honoring the sacred feminine. So on the first evening, it was really strange. I had my kundalini sort of came online a little bit. I was laying there and at one point, like my entire body went completely rigid straight, like a washboard. Um, my spine went really like clicked into place. My legs were like stretched out. I was like, kind of felt this energy going through me. It was just like this alignment of my spine. And I was laying down. And I say it was my kundalini. It, it just... And I felt the kundalini before a little bit. I'd never, I've never actually allowed it to like come up. And, you know, it's always, it's always been kind of like stirring at the bottom of the spine for me. And at this point as well, it, kind of did the same thing. I, it didn't really go up the whole spine, but I felt something. So I'd noticed a lot of what I was holding on to in terms of emotional blockages, energetic blockages in that way was in my sacral. So in the start, like in the, in the lower intestines, the small intestines, like, or the, yeah, underneath the belly button, just around that area, as well as also the root chakra. And the ayahuasca showed me, um, this kind of sexual energy that I've been holding on to. Almost like this chastisement, where I chastised myself for a long time now. And it was really strange. I just sort of felt myself really going there in the ceremony, like kind of frosting <laughs> on the floor. Um, just not over any particular person at all, but like just kind of, just feeling a lot in my root. There was a lot of movement there. There was a lot of fire. And of course, me being male, it was like coming back to this thing of like, I was there and I was thrusting and I was caught myself and I was like, what are you doing? Like, I 
It was actually a really deep and intimate thing for me to experience. And so honoring the sacred feminine for me was like, yeah, just that remembrance, that reminder just to be, just to be careful with yourself and with those in your life. And that's not to say that I'm not respectful of the feminine in my life, because I am, for the most part, as much as I can be. So, yeah, I don't really know why I wrote that at the same time. It was just, I... I felt my sexuality come online with my Kundalini as well. And it was a very natural thing for me to experience. And it was something, I think it was the medicine trying to show me I, to remove some blocks around sexuality that I've been holding on to. So that was a very personal thing for me. So just don't, I, w- I would suggest just don't judge me um, for what I've just shared there verbally because it's only a very small aspect of what I actually experienced and it was personal to me, not really for anyone else to really know about. So, yeah. And then ancient stress, coming back to all these gray hairs, like I'm next month, I'll be 30 years old, the big 3 <laughs> and ancient stress, so I was thinking about how at that time, like tapping into like my own lineage, tapping into my own simultaneous lifetimes, other lifetimes that I've experienced, that I have, that I am experiencing upon this planet, <laughs> Uh, just in different versions of myself and this planet across time. 3D linear past time. And how much stress we've been through. I mean, not every lifetime is full of stress. You know, we have those lifetimes where it's just really easy. Uh, But for the most part, I would say on this planet, it's been mainly about experiencing challenge. A lot of challenge for growth. So ancient stress, yeah, gray hairs, a lot of stress, but also a lot of wisdom as well. That was a thing for me. And ancient just because of the amount of stress and hardship we've been through as a collective on this planet for thousands of years. So we've been through a lot, perhaps almost too much, but who's, who is to decide that other than the ultimate creator, her himself. You receive. So that was me just in the state of like receiving, just being a conduit, just being an antenna to be able to receive the channeled messages that I was in that moment that I didn't really get to write down a lot. But yeah, there was a lot of channeling I was going through at that point, mixed up with a lot of mental stuff, like my own memory. But of course, yeah, there was a lot of, um, a lot of stuff coming through. And then we are children. That was, that was really sparked by uh, seeing, witnessing um, just all of the dancing going on. Like many of us, we, we all, the, many of us in that ceremony, in that first ceremony it's in the morning when the sunlight came up, we began dancing and um, it was really beautiful. We were just like really tapping into that inner child. Um, And it was a wonderful thing to be able to witness and see that in those around me. I was really grateful for that. And it just reminded me of like, yeah, we really are children. Like even if you're 80 years old, like you're still a child inside. You still have that spirit, that childlike nature. And um, it's beautiful. And yeah, really beautiful. And again, Kundalini fired spine straight. Yeah, that was, um, Again, going back to that thing of like, it was, it was incredible when the medicine worked through my body. It was like, I had moments where like all of my bones were clicking after I stood up. It was, it was such a, it was such a healing on a physical level as well as emotional, spiritual, and even mental. It was that medicine really penetrates to every cell of your being. And um, yeah, it opens things up. And so, yeah, and the sacral and root for me as well, that was a big deal. 
and I was able to actually do that. Some Reiki I did upon myself, holding my hand above and over my sacral and just allowing that emotion to bubble up, <laughs> moving it out and actually moving it down through the root and out that way. That was such a profound experience. And I've actually noticed as well in the past week, so today is Sunday, and I finished the second ceremony on Sunday morning a week ago, so it's been seven days. And in this past week, I have been going for it. I've been very emotional. I've been very, very sensitive, actually very scared in a lot of ways. Like I felt like there was a, something, there was like a, a spirit that was haunting uh, the Airbnb that I'm staying in, although that's probably just me and myself just feeling fear. Um, yeah, it was like, it was like the realms of my physical existence here and spirit were very blurred and were very thinned after that experience. And so it's been an interesting week. And also I just wanted to be around on that, at that time, the last Sunday, I went and had drinks with someone who I had been invited out with to have drinks with. And so I went out and I didn't realize you're not supposed to drink alcohol until at least four days after you take an ayahuasca. So there's me doing it pretty much on the same day after doing ayahuasca. And it really, really knocked me out. Um, I had the drinks, great. Had, an, had a nice time, did a bit of dancing, had some fun, but <laughs> I just, I. I was brutally fatigued and tired for pretty much this whole past week or for days after that. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend drinking alcohol after ayahuasca. So, and I felt like that was a part of the emotionality I was feeling and also just coming away from that ayahuasca experience. It was really sad for me, for me to say goodbye to it, to the people there, to the shaman and my own part in that and the healing that had come from it. Um, I was very emotional from that. And every time I heard, or I would go on YouTube and listen to the shaman's recordings of like other songs he's done with his guitar and stuff and his singing, and his daughter's singing as well, Nake as well. Um, the profound, just listening back to those, that it was like bringing up so much emotion for me as well, because it was bringing back this incredible experience of that journey and that moment and that that singing was just so deep because of the experiences I was going through internally and within myself as well. It was a lot. Attention. <laughs> Bless us all for being so afraid of a massive scam that we don't even realize is a scam. Say no more. Don't go there. <laughs> Let's not go there. I've had enough. I've had enough of COVID. Shouldn't even say that. Word. Get myself in a real fluster. Have done. So 26th of June, the second ceremony. I actually wrote down more because I bought my big notepad with me that time. So I know I don't know. That was just a little bit of a humbling situation where it was like, um, I said to someone, <clears throat> they said to me, oh, something X, Y, Z. And I said, I know. And then straight away after I was like, I don't know. Stay humble. <laughs> Always good advice. If you think you know something, there's then a whole infinitum of things that you also don't know. So I like to stay humble and try not to be a know-it-all, even if sometimes I do feel personally I can get, get I can have a great clarity on a great many deal of things. But yeah, if I don't know something, I like to say I don't know. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Yeah, just 
just I think I was dancing inside myself at that time and just having this awesome time even though I was incredibly irritable and itchy and just not feeling great at all on the second ceremony it was just that tiredness I just didn't have the energy in me to be able to create and summon en energy and just to yeah God, even thinking about it is making me feel tired pardon me yeah just even thinking about it is making me feel tired and then flow allow the flow mm -mm 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 -mm. yeah just flow with it flow my friends it's coming back to this whole idea of surrender don't worry about your life path just do your best follow your joyful moments and synchronicity will just align you to where you're meant to be for so long now I worried like oh I'm not doing enough I'm not showing up enough I'm I've messed up this relationship that was supposed to be the be all and end all of my relationships for this lifetime. I was going to marry this person. I was going to have a child with this person and um, spend years and years together where it was going to be beautiful. Little did I realize that that was just not supposed to be the case. Maybe that's because I'm choosing it for it not to be the case, but also on another level. I see that that's not just me deciding that with my logical mind at this point now. I can see other things lining up in my reality that are suggesting that actually, perhaps things were meant to go this way. I don't like saying that at the same time because we do have the choice, the free will to be able to choose what we want to experience and what we don't want to experience, but yeah. Keep it together, yes. <laughs> At this point, I was like really going nuts. There's something about the ayahuasca that makes me, or makes a lot of people that I've noticed um, very shaky, makes you kind of glitch out. You're like a distortion in the matrix, kind of like, <laughs> um, and like, speaking I would be like uh, 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 like like shaking like uh, uh, kind of like gurning as well like you know when you gurn if you're doing like a, high, a hardcore kind of drug for example certain ones let's say uh, MDMA back in the day um, <laughs> ugh, it's disgusting but just that kind of like, it created that, the ayahuasca created that kind of similar feelings. But with this one, it was way more distorted. It was, I was like kind of glitching out a lot and shaking and like feeling like there was insects on me all the time. And to be honest, I think there were, and I was like itching all the time and like shaking and like, and like glitching out basically. And so keeping it together, I was, there were times when I was starting to lose it because I was so irritable a lot of the time as well. I was like, because I was so tired on the second ceremony. I was starting to lose it at times. I was like, right, it's getting a bit, it's getting, I'm getting a bit intense. I'm starting to feeling, I'm feeling quite intense. Um, and then balance, Every, everything is always in balance. But, that was a permission slip for myself to find my own balance again in that moment. And then second density snake consciousness, just writing down actually just snake consciousness, I think was what I wrote down. I felt like when you think of reptilian, what do you think of? For me personally, I think of a lot of things. I think of, I think of the Draco. I think of like the reptilian influence that has wanted to imprison humanity and to malevolent, malevolently control us and enslave us for thousands of years because they're upset that we took their planet away from them 60 million years ago. And then I also think about the reptilian essence in general of like 
the benevolence there, the the reptilian essence that that loves humanity and loves all things and comes from its heart more so than from its ego. And I look at this planet and the past 255 million years, that the lap that we just completed around the Milky Way where upon this planet and this area of our solar system, it's really been all about the reptilian aspect. And we look at our own bodies as well, our own makeup, our own DNA. There's a part of us that is reptilian. We hear so many times about the idea of us having a reptilian brain, and that is very true. That's a part of our own genetic makeup and design is having that really incredible reptilian mind because it is. The reptilian brain is a fantastic, fantastic tool to have. It's what makes us in part, it's a part of what makes us incredible creators. And just looking upon this world as well, it's the reptile is, and you look at the Kundalini as well. This was such an important part for me as well was the Kundalini within us all, the snake, the serpents going up our spine. The snake is a part of us. And the ayahuasca I really allowed me to tune into that in a, in a way that was profound to me, unlike ever before. And I loved that, it was really awesome. And dragon, just dragon. There's, I realize, you know, there's, I, had a channeling session last year and uh, I was asking about different aspects of myself and like everybody upon this planet there's an aspect of us that is Syrian, there's an aspect of us that is Pleiadian, there's an aspect of us that is Arcturian, Cassiopeian, Andromedan, Draco, Insectoid, Sasani, Earthling, <laughs> so many, anything you could think of across any part of the galaxy, almost every single one, almost every single one of us upon this planet right now have incarnated in almost every single part of this galaxy. And so this channeling session I had last year was just it felt one point to me, you know, with all channeling, you have to take it with a pinch of salt. If it's, especially if it's, you know, even, <laughs> even if it's channeling that you've re received internally, like channeled yourself, or if it's external from yourself and it's come through another person that's relaying that information to you, you always have to take it with a pinch of salt. But yeah, I was told there's an aspect of myself that is a 10th dimensional reptilian soldier, Draco soldier, who had ascended himself with his heart. Because to exist within the 10th dimensional plane, that aspect of your consciousness, like consciously to, how shall I say this, using words, it's really hard to describe these concepts. But essentially to be able to to tap into the versions of ourselves that exist in the dimensional planes above a certain threshold, which I believe is the eighth or the seventh, where we start tapping into collective consciousness. For example, the tenth dimension. For us to access that version of ourselves and to embody that, we need to be of pure heart and pure love. So for me to say there's an aspect of myself as a 10th dimensional reptilian soldier, cool. It just resonates with me and makes a lot of sense. But then also there's an aspect of me that is 
a dolphin swimming around in a Syrian sea, there's an aspect of me, several aspects of me that are incarnate in the Sasani star system. There's a version of me that is a woman in the Orion star system. There is a version of me that is a man in a large cloak in the Pleiades. <laughs> so, I'm just saying this to kind of say like I'm not just a I'm not just one thing and the same can be said for everybody who's watching this and anyone and anything we are there's so many versions of us existing all at once and so being a dragon and tapping into that dragon consciousness like the ayahuasca was really a great thing to be able to go there and to feel that and to experience to like tap into that snake, that serpent at the base of the spine and have my spine stretched out. Oh, yeah, and that medicine working through me and just being able to really tap into that natural earth human naturalness and all these different aspects of genetics that we've inherited and had placed within us to be able to create this soup of awesomeness which we are. So, release, awful now. There was, yeah, on that second, second evening, because I was so tired and itchy and frustrated, and there was a lot of other people there, uh, way more than there should have been. Uh, there was like 20 people allowed maximum per ceremony, but like there was like 25 or something that night. <clears throat> and so it was way more and it was very intense, but we still managed, we, we were still okay. We. We got through it. Ooh, just had a sale. <laughs> um, good, awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, release awful now. It was just like, I was just feeling some real roughness inside myself. Can't remember exactly what it was, but it was just very irritable and nasty. Mindful always, just doing my best to be mindful, always. All I can do there is do my best. Just be my, meditate every day. That helps us to find peace in every moment that we possibly can. Vibrant red fruit. I just felt like a vibrant red apple in that moment, perhaps, or that's what I was feeling. <laughs> restriction. There was some restriction I felt in my expression. I was mumbling a lot. Um, both evenings, I was mumbling and just talking quietly to myself, but... I was feeling that restriction. There were so many of us there. We needed, we needed to honor each other's space and honor each other's energy. And so by us, all of us kind of mumbling to ourselves and or just expressing and being verbal or making any kind of noise, it would affect those around us. So we had to be all mindful of what we were putting out, what we were observe it, observing with our eyes, what we, what we were saying. and just being respectful in that way of our other selves around us who are also there to experience and to heal and to have this very sacred and important ceremony together to uplift the planet. Royal wizard. I think that can be said for every one of us here. We are all royal wizards. We are all royalty. We've just been trained and indoctrinated to believe that we are powerless and so small and insignificant when the opposite is really true. There is a perspective that on this planet, we are humans. We are royalty. We are seen as royalty throughout the universe. We're here for
we're the emotional ones. We're here to help teach the rest of the galaxy and the universe about emotions and emotion emotionality. And that's one aspect of what we're here for. We're incredible manifestors and we have the blessing of the creator itself within us. There's no other, to my knowledge, there's no other race in existence that has this type of blessing, this unifying blessing. We're a melting pot of several different species blended together. We're powerful manifestors, royal wizards, all of us. Never forget that. Get used to seeing me. At this point in my second ceremony, I was starting to tap in more to like my purpose and like the work I'm doing and more of like what I want to be doing and how I want to be helping people. And I realized, I was like, yeah, it's like I'm sharing myself here on video right now. And this was a message I was like saying to the world inside myself at that time was like, get used to seeing me. Like, get used to seeing my face here talking on camera to those that will get used to it. My energy is not for everybody, just like anybody's energy is not for everybody. But for those who do resonate with my energy, it's nice to see you. It's nice to meet you once again. <laughs> there is nothing quite like ayahuasca. Quite right. There is nothing quite like it. I did. What could I compare it to? Magic mushrooms that I did a month ago. <clears throat> ayahuasca is... more intense in my opinion <clears throat> yeah, yeah. you can go deeper with it <clears throat> and especially compared to LSD as well ayahuasca is deeper than LSD in my perspective <laughs> here's something that came to me own being God, but don't be a dick. <laughs> I love that. Own being God, but don't be a dick. So, this is what I'm learning about my own creator, my own creatorship, and embodying God on this journey that I'm going through now of letting God come within instead of just being Zach and this this ego, allowing the most high to be able to channel through me and to be me, surrendering myself fully to God within. But at the same time, don't let that ego become too arrogant with that. Let the ego be humble. Basically, just don't be a dick. Know that you are powerful, know that you have great power, but also with that comes great responsibility. So curb your arrogance. Curb your dickheadedness. <laughs> Be a king that is humble and caring or queen. <laughs> yeah <laughs> own being God but don't be a dick about it <laughs> be humble be humble be caring, be considerate <laughs> listen <sighs> becoming telepathic or evolving into higher states of telepathy that's one thing that I've noticed within myself in the past week was 
higher states of sensitivity is what have come to me. I'm a lot more sensitive now than I was before the ayahuasca. And I noticed as well, especially in the days like during the ayahuasca and shortly after as well, my telepathy had evolved a lot. And of course, I'm still working with what's mental, like purely just like kind of like that lower mind logical thoughts and what is genuine kind of authentic higher brainwave downloads from spirit. But that's been a real beautiful thing to experience within myself. And it's something that will last as well. And sorry, Grandma. Yeah, that's a personal thing, just with my own, my own grandma. And also with my dad as well and my, my granddad. Um, that's just some, some of my own personal things that I needed to process in that moment. And that was a really beautiful thing. Forgiveness for self. Although really I didn't have anything to forgive. It was just, it was just an emotion of, yeah, compassion for others in my family. Build your empire. This is still on that line of like, my grandparents had always given me so much pressure to perform, to be this person. And even my dad as well, in a way, of wanting to see the best of me, of what, in a lot of ways, they thought would be best for me, especially for my grandparents. Like, I want you to be this kind of person. I want you to have this kind of job. I want you to be earning this kind of money to have this kind of lifestyle. And that led to a lot of rejection, I suppose, even growing up at a young age in my teens, early teens and early life in that way, it was like, never feeling like I would be good enough in the perception of those who I deemed as an authority, my family, in that way. And so transitioning on from saying sorry to my, my parents and grandparents to, to, to build your empire. And so here I am now. And I am, I'm building my empire in that way of saying it, just building, build your empire. What does that mean to me? Yeah, build a business, build a system that helps people on grander, heightened levels. That's what I wanna do. That's what I'm doing. This is my life path, is helping other people. And a part of that is creating an organization, an empire as a way of saying. Empire ha can have a lot of negative con connotations attached to the word itself. Building a system, build your system. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> What's your secret? <laughs> I love that word, secrets. This one trick, this one secret to healing your emotional body and loving yourself unlike ever before. This one trick to building financial independence and security for yourself, unlike you'd ever thought of before. <laughs> this one secret to living the life of your dreams. This one secret to having the relationship that is just beautiful and loving and caring and all of the good things. I just like secrets. <laughs> or like presenting things in that way because it creates the idea of anticipation. Transformation. Yeah, the whole ayahuasca experience was very transforming for me, for sure. Loved it, absolutely loved it. I'm looking forward to doing it again. And it was just such a blessing to be able to do it with that particular shaman, 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 in that way, for my first experience. It was just felt really authentic. The only difference was really was I was in a house in Mexico. 
rather than being in the Amazon jungle. It was same, same, but different. It didn't really matter. I was just so grateful to have that experience. Thank you, God, within. Thank you to myself. Thank you for all involved. And thank you for everything and ultimately spirit itself for aligning this for me now so I can have this experience for all of us. Thank you. Wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That was a theme. Whoa. Like, whole experience was like, whoa. Wow. Yeah. Galactic lineage. Galactic lineage. Healing lineage. Ancestral. On planet, off planet. It's what we're here to do in this life. For those on that path. Healing the deep stuff. And having the space and the time to be able to do it. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for healing. I, um, I'll be honest with you, I drank a coffee when I started this video today. I hadn't drank any coffee and I was much more grounded. During this video, I've polished off a coffee. And so now I'm, and so I've been a bit ungrounded, a bit more feisty and fiery. So it's just another reminder in me sharing that to say it'd be nice if you could just show up on video Zach without any stimulants and just be a bit more natural in that way naturally yourself people will experience a different version of you that isn't so chaotic (laughs) anyway This is really what I wanted to share. I'm really glad to have done this video. It's really wrapping up the past week of integration. I'm looking forward to what comes next in my adventure. Before I actually leave, (coughs) before I actually leave Mexico, I may take this camera and go to some Mayan ruins and we'll get the the codes, the energies from that place. That'd be really juicy and lush. May also go to another cenote, go do some, go do some jumping off a bridge again and actually take, take the camera with me this time and jump in some water. Oh, it's beautiful. That'd be nice. Go do a bicycle tour, like I said as well. Get on this bicycle. probably do that today because I check out this Airbnb tomorrow (laughs) yeah exciting times ahead really looking forward to the rest of this year and beyond thank you so much for sharing this space with me today my infinite love and infinite blessings to you all I hope you have a lovely week ahead may all be well with you and yours and thank you once again much love humbleness from this heart to you all peace be with ciao now blessings bye